Greetings, sleepers. Before we begin our descent into this tale, as the lights dim and you settle in, please remember that due to adult language and the violent nature of this story, as well as the very adult themes of cult divinity loss, this story is rated M for mature, and we strongly encourage listener discretion. Now, journey with us beyond the city's neon glow, snaking through faded alleys and darkened corridors. Descend past echoing subway platforms and choking steam tunnels. Follow the trails of blood raining down from the streets and apartments above. Crimson rivers perpetually fed by atrocity and sin. Explore the city's darkest labyrinths and ritual chambers where cold concrete meets warm flesh, where shadows dwell and insanity reigns. Gaze shamelessly into this abyssal realm. Freely share your forbidden secrets with strangers. Open your tortured heart and let the sorrows and passions bleed out. Allow them to reshape your mind and body into exquisite horrors. Sink into sublime depravity and soothing pain where dead citadels and forgotten worlds wait to be on a tenuous threshold of darkness and madness. Welcome, Seekers. It is good you have finally glimpsed what lies just beneath the lie. I will be your narrator guiding you through the atrocities of this truth. With me are the victims of Metropolis, the Inferno, <coughs> and the Labyrinth, our menagerie of lost and broken players introduce yourselves to the audience hello my name is steve you can find me on the internet at voodoo arcade my pronouns are he him and tonight i am playing the abomination of Voight. hey everybody i'm ambrose my pronouns are he or they you can find me all over the internet as am changeling because it me, Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Code Designs. P.S. I'm going on strike from the 11th to the 18th because Etsy hiked the fees unreasonably, so I won't be available during that time. But you can always message me privately. Hello, all. I am Debbie. You can find me online at Sorta of Solid. And don't like I am Dietrich. Hello, friends. My name is Keems, and you can find me on the interweb at It's Me Keems. Tonight, I'll be playing Xavier Watson, the scientist. Francesco uh, Bellucci, the fixer of death mage extraordinaire for tonight. Excellent. <clears throat> now, it is time to regale Steve on what he missed last week. So do fill us in, dear Bo. Yeah, should I do this with Bo's voice, or should I do this with my own? I mean, I can start if you like. So I'm dead. Oh. That doesn't answer the question, though. So, percentile, <laughs> somebody roll. Steve, that's you, buddy. Oh. Since you weren't here. Oh, damn. I already rolled. Hey, hey, hey. 94. Yes. So. You are both. Cool. <laughs> For some strange reason, we can't get a hold of Voight. We're not sure what happened to him. Dietrich and Bo. Dietrich and myself find ourselves sitting in front of each other in big comfy chairs with a fireplace. Dietrich makes pinch me, but uh, I demand he rethink that process. So the scientist pinches himself. His childhood friend walks by, commenting how it never works, then strides right into the fireplace while his flesh burns and sizzles. Kind of reminds me of a family cookout. You know what I mean? Anyway. Audrey Mage, myself, has enough banter, and I created a door of my own making with some blood and salt. The two walk out onto a street to find a passed out Ron Chaso with a dislocated arm. Dietrich uh, relocates the arm, waking Ron Chaso up from the pain. Uh, we squabble a bit and debate what to do next. Then we make our way into the house Ronchezo was trying to get into. We find Xavier speaking to another woman. Ah, sure. Xavier finds out the meaning of the symbol she'd been looking for. It's basically a mark of death placed by the priest. Not your normal priest, that's for certain. 
the wise woman sees us, even though Xavier does not. A woman speaking to Xavier explains that we are halfway into the dreaming and halfway into the waking limbo. Our business scientist tries calling the, our phones, but to no avail. Francesco's number calls Xavier back. It's an ER doctor wanting to know if Francesco's allergies and details. There's been an incident and urgent surgery is necessary. Xavier orders an Uber speedily and we attempt to get in with her. She's able to get in, but we're not. There's sigils all over the car and the image of a dark winged entity overlaid with the driver. A quick travel, the rest of us to the hospital, seeing everyone's nightmares along the way. In the Uber, driver tells Xavier about many things that he should not know but somehow does, causing her to take some damage to her stability. She comes to in front of the hospital, the only person inside the vehicle. She's screaming and her nose is bleeding profusely. As Diedrich and Ranchezo head into the hospital, I hear a noise in the alleyway. I go to check it out and Though when behold, there are two angelic-like beings in a duel. They look directly at me and uh, edge way back towards the hospital, but somehow I lose some time. Then, then I catch up to Dietrich and Ranchezo. Ranchezo's act astral body is beginning to show the effects of his accident the closer he gets to his body. Xavier manages to wake him against the doctor's wishes for his own good, I swear, sending him instantly back into his physical form. She finds out the information of where Dietrich and I are, then heads there in a much more normal Uber ride to Dietrich's house. Ranchezo is taken directly to surgery as she leaves. Xavier finds Dietrich's door unlocked, and Dietrich and I are unconscious. The two men, Dietrich and I, feel as if we're fading. The cat with strangely intelligent blue eyes is sitting on Dietrich's lap. As Xavier tries to awaken me, a very pale, tattooed man emerges from the shadows and greets her. He claims he can wake us up. He pulls out a switchblade. Not threateningly, but as if it's a tool. Sid, as he is revealed to be, stabs Dietrich in the hand. <laughs> Amused me. And successfully awakens him. Sid then proceeds to do the same with myself, also successful. Sid takes his leave and I continue squabbling with Dietrich. Xavier and I are frustrated and I storm out to get a stiff drink at the bar. It's much deserved if you ask me. Xavier leaves to go check on Ranchezo instead of to the bar. After I have a decent amount of alcohol to numb the memories of recent events, especially dealing with Dietrich, I head out a bit tipsy to find I'm followed by that cat. That cat that had been sitting on Dietrich in his house. Wasn't that Dietrich's cat? Apparently not, and on examination of the collar, this cat is called Sin. It seems intelligent, and I uh, realize this cat may in fact be a mage. And it had been waiting for Dietrich to awaken and talk to him, with him, as only a madness mage can. Frustrated, I make my way back to Dietrich's place, cat in tow. Back at the hospital, 
Brian Chaso's surgeries are, are successful, and the doctor informs Xavier. She goes to his room and sees a man in a dark trench coat sitting in the room with Francesa. The priest. Is this the priest? Thank you very much. That... So there was a cat is what I got out of all of that. There was a cat named Sin. That doesn't a person seem... named Sid. And I'm in danger. John, that was good. That was really good, John. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's where the scene will begin. The scene belongs to you. Oh, are, are, are you talking about Xavier you, in the hospital you, with Ranchezo yeah. or me? Ugh. Oh, no. no. I'm talking about the priest, where we literally were either recap left off. Okay. So that's Xavier and Ranchezo. Yep. I don't know. Am I awake? You are groggily conscious. Like for like when you first come out of anesthesia from surgery. So, like, you know what that's like. Will be. Yeah. I'm very um, tired. I, I think Renteso is going to be fine. He doesn't need any last rites, uh, dear priest. Um, uh, uh, yeah. hmm? um, I'm just going to take a nap because can, can you leave? This hurts a lot. Push the button. Renteso, Renteso, uh, I need uh -huh. you awake. I need you awake. No. Okay, okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just sits in a chair smiling with his fingers steepled. His leg crossed one over the other. Um, so I take it that you're uh, pretty insistent on staying. Uh, what can we do for you? And as she says this, she's going to take her phone out and um, I'm assuming that between the five of us, we might have a group chat. Um, for that, yeah. Yeah, she's going to text the group chat and she's going to text hospital now. Oh, I... Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Uh, what, what, what? <clears throat> Priest? Father? Uh, what do I call you? Don't say daddy. Don't say daddy. Don't say daddy. He says <laughs> nothing. Daddy? Sorry. Daddy? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, daddy. Not sorry. <laughs> he says nothing. Um... <sighs> Okay, uh... Oh, this is awkward. Um, why are you here? Nothing. Okay, cool. Uh, as in intellectually arousing as this conversation is, are you gonna try and kill me or not? Uh, so, so, your group chat, was it a text chat or did you use a voice call? Definitely a text. None of you get a text, by the way. It says sent. And then your phone is distortion for a second, and you get a message back. They can't help you. But we can. Her he eyes not, widen. He's not spoken yet, because we can hold him in check for a time. Um, she's going to respond back. Uh... I take it that it might be good for us to leave now. And she sends that text. Your friend is in no shape to leave. You need protection. We can offer that. Who's we? And what does this protection cost? My brother and I. 
door slides open, and in steps a very tall, very emaciated man with uh, very long, stringy, jet black hair, eyes completely silvered over, no shoes, mm. fingernails and toenails strangely sharpened in jet black. I well, we have more dinner guests, I see. I think visiting hours are over. Visiting hours are never over in the city. Very soft voice, not quite feminine, not quite masculine. This is our city. What do you want from us? Make a bargain. Elysium will not protect you from the priest, but we can. For a time. What I'm do you want assuming. in exchange? <clears throat> I believe that you were leaving, yes, in three days' time, your friends, and I'm sure to drag you along with them. The text dings and says, yes, we can see your fate is tied into theirs. The man says, tied inextricably. The text says, tied forever. I mean, you see, um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm chemically induced fog. In two days' time, we need you to go, and an address pops up on your text, even though it's the guy talking. Here, where my brother has sent you the information on, it's a power substation. Destroy it. Who are you? My this brothers. is the priest. I'm but... sorry. Where are they? I am Asvieni, and this is my brother, Ainavesa. Pleased to meet you in the text. She kind of frantically there... looks from the phone to him. Is there any way to, like, I don't know, in the mage game, it'd be like putting on mage site, turning on mage site? <laughs> I just sent them, Ambrose. I know you're about to ask. <laughs> uh,. In your current state? No. Normally, sure. But you don't need Mage Sight to tell you these are radiating supernatural power, but they're not human, whatever they are. That's One feels... You know that feeling you get when you find that really good cat meme or you look up that thing in Wikipedia and it turns out you were right? That feeling you get when the movie you really wanted to stream pops up just in time for you to collapse on your couch in front of Netflix? It's One feels nice. like that, like all the best parts of the web, all of the good things of the internet, or at least all of the addicting things. <laughs> Another one feels like your childhood. Game Boys and Pagers and Beavers and the Analog. Mm, old school meets the new, and I appreciate this. What do you get out of this? We destroy the power station, you protect us from the priest? Yes. What's your end goal? We can only interfere where we are told to interfere. We all work for someone. Does the person you work for have our best interest at heart? Or their own? from the text at the same moment that the one in the room laughs. <laughs> we work for no person. Her interests are everyone's interests. On the text, everyone's interests, out loud. She wishes to free the world on the text, the prison she made. And if we disagree, and she looks over at the priest, what will he do to us? The same thing he's done to all of this one's friends. On the text, destroy them out loud, consume them on the text, devour them out loud. Cast his soul into the inferno. In the text and out loud, take his magic. That uh, that last bit is particularly pissing me off. Fine, we'll do it. Excellent. On the text, the bargain is struck. Out loud, a deal is made. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, Malkuth, bless you. He just walks out of the room, and your phone distorts, and your message sends to the group. Hospital now, everyone gets the text. Where's the priest? You sit up and look, the chair is empty. Davia, 
you get this yeah. really weird feeling. It doesn't affect Rancheso because uh, he's really out of it and stoned. Although it is weird. Suddenly you're way more stoned again than you were a minute ago. Davia, I need you to roll, keep it together. Yeah. As you look at the Boy, clock yeah. and you're watching the second hand and it goes tick, tick, wobble, tick, 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 tick. In the <laughs> direction. Alright, keep it together. Um, is that willpower or uh on the little bubble it actually says the little save under the uh, uh attribute. Uh keep it together is Act uh, under pressure. Coolness. Uh willpower. Yeah, save, is yes. under willpower, yeah. Two D oh. Okay. Wow, the rolls are not in my favor tonight. Ten. Lose one stability, but you don't panic and run screaming as you realize. The second hand wobbles and then ticks backwards. A few ticks, you blink, and the clock is reset to an hour ago. The priest never came because it's an hour ago. Beaumont, Voigt, and Dietrich. Voigt, not for you. You get the text. But you don't know anything weird is happening. To Dietrich and Beaumont... Xavier is looking at you saying, I gotta get to the hospital when you get a text from Xavier saying, get to the hospital now. Okay, seriously, it was only a light stabbing. So she's she's still with us? Yeah, technically. Because it's an hour ago. Oh, shit. Xavier, what in Sam Hill are you doing? Is this a prank? Um... Do I have a recollection of being at the hospital, or did that just not happen in my mind? As soon as they show you the text, it's a good thing this isn't Mage of the Ascension, because you just get a whole bunch of paradox. There's like a tearing sensation inside of you, like pulling a muscle with that burning heat, but a lot worse and everywhere all at once. And you That's remember awful. everything, except you're not in the hospital anymore. You're back in your body an hour ago with a very confused Dietrich and Beaumont. Uh... She's going to double over and barf behind Dietrich's couch. This is very appropriate. Hey, hey, not there. That's not the barfing spot. Where is uh, you keep <laughs> vodka in your toilet? Crying out loud. The you barfing don't mind spot him. is in the bedroom. You you vomit <laughs> wherever you want, and he'll just clean it up when he gets around to it. Get a clean test, it, Xavier. buddy. <sighs> Unknown sender. I have a text. Mm -hmm. She's going to look at it. 28 minutes, tick tock. We need to destroy the power plant. Oh, no, no, no. The power plant you got to do in two days, the day before they mm -hmm. want to leave for the big mage conclave. You have 28 minutes before the priest shows up for Rancheso. We need to go get Rancheso. And when I say now, we need to get there in less than half an hour. I, I don't Break understand. Him out. The priest. I'll explain on the way. We need to go now. No more cursed Ubers, please. <sighs> I hope that that is the case. Don't worry, I have lifts. Sakes. Let's just go. Um, oh, we'll help Xavier out the door. Um, on the way there, she's going to attempt to explain everything that's happened uh, from the power plants to her going back in time uh, to the priest sitting in Rancheso's room. Okay. Dietrich well. is just going to find some random under the table money to make sure to tell the driver we want to go there really fucking fast. You won't make it you know a way you can, both Beaumont and Dietrich. Both heard the story. Timey wimey. This is Elysium. There are gods in Elysium. As the metropolis falls apart them. and as Inferno draws ever closer, the lie begins to crumble and the gods awaken. There is one particular god known as the god of the highways. He can get you anywhere you want to go in an instant. You just have to make the right deal. Damn it. Huh. Where is the cat? Uh, winding its way around your leg right now because you you asked. Ow. 
Oh, uh, Dietrich, I'm pretty sure this is a mage named Sin. Ow. Wanted to talk to you, since you're absolutely bonkers. Ow. I am perfectly sane. Slash Mao. Slash was on your leg, Dietrich. Plus, this cat is an asshole. I mean, that doesn't say much, but it is an asshole. I'll talk later. We have to go to a hospital because I don't know. The cat pees on you. Talk to the cat. Yeah. I will talk to the god of the highways. All right, fine. Besides, he peed on the wrong leg. <laughs> There's a right leg to pee on. You know what, Dietrich? I don't even want to like know. This is a puking spot. <laughs> Boy, you got that yes. text. What do you do about that? <laughs> <laughs> what would the text say? Oh. Come to the hospital right now. We have to save Rancheso from the priest. Oh, please hurry. The priest of suffering and death is going to do some weird magic stuff to our friend. We oh. need to leave now. Hold on. The priest is with a capital Wait. B. Uh, negative. Okay. Uh, about how far away am I from the hospital? Uh, five minutes because you were just down the street at a bar gathering information because we had you all last, last session trying to learn things about this priest. Ooh, hospitals. Yeah. Meet you there. You got time to finish that drink. Bring, bring your IDs, doctor. Doctor? Doctor. Doctor? Yes. Uh, so yeah, I will casually finish my drink before um, <laughs> strolling in the shadows over to the hospital. Okay. Dietrich. Your kitty now. kitty. Okay. Can you speak English? I do not speak Russian. Death glare. <sighs> screechy, screechy. Uh. Looks at you. Oh. Allows the scratches for a second. Nom. Oh, you like me. Thank you. Draws blood. Okay, so let's see. How can I talk to you? How can I talk to you? Huh. Uh, Solar all see through the illusion? Yes. All right. Uh, 14 plus 13, wait, 18. It'd be funny if you had a negative as a mage. 18. Yes, uh, when you focus and make the, uh, Vorish sign, you see that, uh, uh, this is a human trapped in this form. Hmm. Uh, anything I could do to uh, untrap it? Yes, any mage can dispel. Give it enough time. You don't can't do it in twenty minutes. However, maybe pay more attention to the cat and those that don't dismiss it until you can figure it out. Is you you pretty sure you recognize that mage from a picture? There was a story once about this really really bad house. Hmm. Uh. Are you Kitty from Bad House? Ow. Hmm, true. Every house is Bad House. Ow. The cat looks right. at you and you can just feel it saying, especially this one. Okay. Uh, well, I... Uh, hmm. I might have... Eh, you know what, fuck it. Come on, you take... You hit ride with me for now. we fix your problem later. Hops we on have your to shoulder, grabs a hold. Oh yeah, you like me a lot. Beaumont, what are you doing? 
Uh, are they in the Uber, or are they waiting on it? We're not getting an Uber because it won't make it in time. Alright, so. Uh, Dietrich will cut. Dietrich, wow. Beaumont will kind of... I'm sorry, I was Dietrich the werewolf before you were Dietrich the slab. Hodor, what? <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yep. The whole stream went down. The world ended. Oh, no. Dad can see us. Dad can hear us. Papa, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Where were we? I've got to go fast. But I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Not gonna say Channeling. It. Gonna say, say it. Not going to say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. If I talk to Road Daddy, will give he give me a pat on the road head? <laughs> okay. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> I will say the internet still ruined that word for me, but you know what? That was pretty good. <laughs> so anyway. You now continue with our things. regularly scheduled programming. I don't know, you can try. Back to Sonic the Hedgehog. You need to so yeah, I, what was the last thing you heard me say, Tyler? Oh, I heard all of it. Or... I was just restarting all the stream stuff. That's why my answer is, I don't know, but you can try. Awesome. Okay, so... No, wait. What? Was... No, the last thing before the, the stream shut down. Oh, you were, you were making fun of Dietrich. Because he's you a slab. You hear my beautiful description? Nope. Tendrils. There was. Ah. Do it again. Oh, the of Do flesh. it again. I, just, again. I have to tell Alice I something. Hold on one second. Alice I, you know damn well this is not a family channel. My pearls, where are they? Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, hold on. It's not. Jesus. <laughs> anyway. Uh, man, that description was so good, though. Oh, shit. Um. So do it again, but better this time. Do it again, but better. Than... Wow, I'm wounded. Yep. yep. I'm wounded. I mean, I'm just saying it was good to start off with. Now we just got to make it better. Here's a hint. Okay. Get in your car. <laughs> oh, but my description was so much better. <laughs> I have no doubt. I seriously have no doubt. It was great. It was great. You know what? Uh, Beaumont is going. Stop do thinking I, about Roadhead. Do I, do I be ridiculous? Do I want to be ridiculous? <sighs> yes. So. In an awesome and badass way. Bo is going to flounce over to his car. Assuming it's there. Pop the hood. 
lean back on it, roll his shirt up into a crop top. And wait. <laughs> Do you start the car? No, he popped the hood, so it would be like a distress. When you pop the hood, it's it's like supposed to signify distress. In a driveway. Fine. In Dietrich's driveway. Uh, if only you'd heard my original thingamabob. Uh. Yeah, he'll he'll go get in the car and turn it on. Uh, it plays a country song for about two minutes and then it distorts, and they're static. He'll try to change the channel. As you flip through the stations, you get that sound of static and really far away music. But every time you flip a channel, you catch a word, too. A word said by a different person, a different announcer, a different song, a different DJ, and different voices. I hear you, child. He's taken aback by this a little bit, uh, and he'll just, like, sit there in kind of wonderment and just, like, twist 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 again um and then who kind of stare at the radio and think for a moment uh i appreciate your ear this moment uh we need to get somewhere and we need to get somewhere in a hurry What can I offer you? Come find me in a place of pain. Very nearby. We're going to a place of pain, my share. A hospital. A place of traveler's pain. Traveler's pain. The it's DMV an insurance place. <laughs> place. Tra Do y'all know a place of traveler's pain? Your radio distorts and comes on real loud to the police band, talking about a very bad wreck that just happened about a mile down the road at the intersection to the interstate. Where is the good look? And then the car dies. Oh, mm. I suppose I'll have to get that fixed later. There's a car accident we need to get to with uh, not my car, apparently. <sighs> I guess we should get a move on then. Dietrich, do you have a... Oh, I hate to think of what his vehicle looks like. Dietrich, do you have a vehicle? Uh, you, you mean the car? Yeah, I have a car. Everyone has a car here. No, not everyone has a car. That's why I ask. For all I know, you have a Vespa. So, uh... Dietrich walks past his piles of crap and opens the door to his garage. And inside you see just the car in good condition. Dietrich, where did you steal this car from? I did not steal the car from anywhere. I bought it, it went here, and now I have... I think it still has gas. I need to sit in the front seat or else I'll get car sick. Will is good because there is only front seat. I beg your pardon. It only has front seat. Now, cat leaps onto the dashboard. So you two will have to sit uh, together. You swear. Oh, the cat's I'm sitting chuckling. on your lap. Dietrich, 
Diedrich, I swear to all the gods. You, you are the, you are. Mm. Hey, it, it will get us there quick. I mean, it, it is Viper. You mean Cobra? Are you going to drive? Uh. Like, can you drive to begin yes. with? Precisely. I, I, I sit in the driver's seat and I, you know, look in the normal places for where somebody would leave their keys and then say, oh, yo, one second. I pop the trunk, walk into the back, open up the spare tire. There we go. There's the keys. Okay, let's go. Where is Gridlock? He pushes the button. He didn't even need the keys because they were in the car and that's enough. It, one has to have keys to drive, right? Let's yes. go. We're wasting time. How much more time do we actually have? 18 minutes. 18 minutes. We need to go now. We've wasted enough. Okay. Yes. You tear down the road. It's easy. No, to I was, I was, I was pausing because uh, Steve. Oh. I kind of look at my watch or look at a watch or the clock. Just be like, actually, can I get one more in a shot? And then I'll cash out. And uh, I was going to wow. say it, Tyler. Uh, the moment the garage door opens, I do not bother putting it down again. I just tear out as fast as the car will go. So you get car sick, huh, Xavier? Well, that car goes fast. Turns on a dime, too. You have no trouble finding the wreck because, like, three ambulances pass you and a police car and a fire truck. And uh, you can see the lights from very far away. There's a lot of them. And it smells really weird, too. And you figure out why, because as you get closer, you see that a semi is jackknifed and flipped and is leaking some kind of green fluid everywhere. Gallons and gallons, hundreds of gallons of it. It's probably not It's probably not great. Cops are cordoning off the area. There's half of a car underneath the back end of the jackknife semi and another car underneath the part that fell over the tanker just crushed. And three more cars just flipped and rolled. There's glass everywhere, blood. You think there's still somebody in the street face down, limbs in directions that don't work. This is why you always wear your seatbelt. I don't Beaumont. think a seatbelt could help these poor people. <laughs> Beaumont will twist the radio dial to see if the god of the highways will speak to them again. Uh, perception from anyone but Beaumont who's looking at the radio. Either of you other two. Okay. Seventeen. Okay. Fourteen from Xavier. Uh, those are both full successes. You notice that Beaumont's just randomly flipping through the radio dial, which is acting perfectly normal, but as soon as he touches the dial, uh, one of the figures hunched over at the side of the road that at first glance you thought was like... Uh, someone who was injured retching into a ditch stands upright immediately turns towards you drops something wet and grisly looking Just Looks like it was a piece of a guy that's in the ditch it looks right at your car starts walking over uh, uh, do, you know, oh? uh, do you know what this uh, God looks like does he look like crazy man about to come and murder us? No, not not that I know of. Yes, Xavier, yeah. And she's pointing at the man walking towards us. Who is now suddenly right at the door of your car. It doesn't look like a man anymore. It's a rogue uh, figure. With mouth sewn shut. Very strange I rolled, eyes. I rolled the window what's, down. What, what's up, Steve? I make a quick out-of-character suggestion. Run? Dukes of Hazard the shit out of there. Expectantly, oh, fine. expectantly looking at Beaumont. Oh, 
I rolled the window down. Beaumont's window? Well, yeah. I wouldn't I rolled my own down. That's crazy. Reading strap. Uh, the mouth doesn't move because it's sewn shut, but you can hear it in your head. Hello, Miss Ami. Uh, how can we help you? I'll tell you how you can help me when you tell me how I can help you, Traveler. Uh, we need to get to the hospital right away as as quickly as inhumanly possible. We'll drive. Our friend. I would very much like to know the deal in which I am entering to receive this service. I've offered you nothing. Drive to the hospital. It's right over there. Points in the general direction. Why do you need me? Why would your trip to the hospital interest me? So much of this world is so very boring. You let a priest? Have my attention. Uh, uh, Xavier, you're one who actually was there. I think. In about 15 minutes, uh, this person, this entity called the priest, is going to somehow harm our friend, and we we need to get there immediately. Not a priest, the priest. Yes. Fascinating. You're all going to die. I can help you, though, yes? Help us die or help us get there? Help you with what you truly need. Why do you need to get to the priest instead of away from the priest? Uh, can, can you just give our, get our friend here now? Instead? Our friend is at the hospital? Yes. I can. I just need a piece of him. Uh. I need to connect to him. Uh, does anyone have anything over in Chazos? We'll say yes. Somebody has something he touched. I mean, uh, hold hold on. Uh, check underneath <laughs> seat on left hand side. Chazo is in here once. Uh, he he put gum under chair. I am not touching that. Xavier, have... you were just in the hospital with him. If you have anything, I legitimately give out cards to every person who walks in my bar. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah. I reach under the chair and grab the gum anyway. Nasty. And give it to this god of the highways. Major, you are positively, absolutely hey, disgusting. I had something of his and you did not. I don't understand how any of your drugs made it past clinical, clinical trials. I am very disgusting. smart. It opens its mouth, tearing the stitches with a ripping noise and wet sounds. His mouth is full of fingers. It pops the gum in, swallows the gum in the fingers. Uh, from way across the highway on the other side, you hear a cop say, what the fuck's his hand? What the fuck's his fingers? Looking in the ditch where this guy was a second ago. Uh, <laughs> Here's what I want from you, Traveler. Looking at Beaumont. Always pick up hitchhikers when you see them. Uh, is there... You know what? I know better than to question a god. I will do so. Never turn one down again. No, sir. I will not. Excellent. And then it's gone. And from the ditch you hear screaming as if somebody unconscious suddenly woke up in a lot of pain. And a whole bunch of activity. I think I know that scream. Uh, uh, someone ought to text Voight and tell him not to go to the hospital. Tell him to meet us somewhere else. Oh no, the screaming is not Ranchezo, Dietrich. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. The person that the god of the highway was twisting on woke up. Yeah, it's the. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Well, hello, Raiders. Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome. Woo! 
Ooh. Ah, yes. The devils are here. There are many devils here, yes. Devil's fuck. Wow. Thanks all for joining, guys. We are playing cult and weird stuff's happening. Um. Just uh, very quickly, I think, um, to clarify what I was doing, I ordered that shot and drink. Uh, since I had 18 minutes left before I had to be where I was supposed to be, uh, I, I slam and I said I would cash out, so I slam yep. the uh, the shot and I grab the beer and I walk out. I'm we're in Los, we're in we're in uh, we're in New Orleans, right? You are in New Orleans, yep. Oh yeah, then I can absolutely walk out with this beer. Perfect. Sure can. Um. <laughs> um. So I. I'm currently trying to figure out how to make this morphine pump just go just a little bit higher. What morphine pump? Keep pressing the button. It doesn't work. <laughs> what morphine maybe pump? Maybe that's just maybe that's just all in my head. Who knows? You just found a button to press. Yeah, he's just reaching over, going, "Man, I hope I hope this is drugs." Are Are you still in the hospital, Francesco? I have no idea. I have no clue. What more? So, uh, pump? Boom on. The morphine pump I was hooked up to while I was in surgery? You're laying on a couch in a really shitty house of some kind that needs cleaning. Like a lot of cleaning. It smells weird in here. You're not hooked up to anything. You hurt a lot. And I had a really nice morphine pump in the hospital. This couch is comfy bleeding all over it. it's leather <laughs> can I do anything about... well no I'm not going to try and move and not open up my wounds um, how bad am I bleeding not bad just seeping bandages okay uh, have I have I been here what been to Dietrich's nope Okay. You sure have not. But I have all my memories from my experience with the priest. Sure uh, do. So, yeah, he is... <clears throat> he is going to find, like, hopefully, like, a, I'm assuming this is just like... God, this place is... Gross. Okay. Um, so he's going. He's going to try and find the cleanest spot on the couch, and shift himself <laughs> through a lot of pain, and just kind of move himself just a little bit, so he can get his head put on something, and then he's going to find like the cleanest towel. It's probably on the floor. Clothes are probably everywhere. Uh, if Cleanest. you want to look in the uh, dishwasher. <laughs> dishwasher, perfect. Uh, he's gonna find the. He's gonna find something on the lines of like a clean bandage to try and just like press up against wherever he's. You can feel your stitches there. start to tear when you try to move. Very gingerly, and just be like, okay. Oh, okay, this is a lot of pain. This is pain. Okay. Do I have my phone? You do. I have my text. Holy shit, I had a morphine pump. Where the fuck did you guys do? Send. So the you all text. get the message. It plays on the car speakers. This hurts. I'm at a smelly man's apartment. What the actual fuck? Also, what is he doing at your place, Beaumont? If I had to make an educated guess, Dietrich, I would say Renchesel might be at your place. But he's so would... smelly. Yes, that is your apartment, Dietrich. Yours smells absolutely horrendous. 
<laughs> I'm gonna text Does Voight. not have smell. Need assistance. Xavier. Wounds opening up. Oh. Blood loss imminent. I okay. Diedrich does not have a sense of smell. Hold no on. No sense of logic. And as you're talking, I start. I think Dietrich just doesn't have a lot of sense. Gunning it. Back to my house. And somehow possibly. you get there just as Voight is strolling up casually from the sidewalk. <clears throat> strolling casually, kind of like this. It's fine. I almost <sighs> hit him. You know, the entire time. Ouch. Pay. Like punch Where's or like the drugs? Punch no, with Dietrich. the car. Dietrich oh. drugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're walking up on the sidewalk. You don't really remember walking this far, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, Beaumont will whack Dietrich with this fan that he has. Just. <laughs> what are you doing that for? You nearly made me hit Void. What are you talking about? I did that because you almost hit Void. Only because you hit me on the head. I hit you on the head because, you know what? Never hey, mind. do you know where any painkillers are, Seth? Okay, I'm I'm a little confused on where everyone is. I thought Rancesco was in the apartment and we were out on the streets. You are. He he's said, teleported. He's, 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 he's on his still phone. bleeding. Seth. He's just texting you. I'm dying in here. Messages. Okay. <laughs> and no one has responded. No. <laughs> okay. How possible is infection from this couch? Send. Oman texts back, very possible. No, he holy shit, Beaumont. Out off of it. Where the fuck am I? Send. At that point in time, Dietrich walks through the door, goes into his freezer, pulls out a bottle of pills and tosses them at you. I can't move my arms, so they just hit me. There's the drugs you want. The, the fuck there are the god... Oh, man, you are bad. You are horrible. Bedside manner. What the actual fuck, Dietrich? This is not a bed. That is a couch. And I'm bleeding all over it. Congratulations. He's not that type of doctor, Rancheso. Uh, doctor, doctor. Also, like, you think you're the first person to bleed on that couch. <laughs> You better be careful. You might grow a third arm from that pills. Hey, if I could, if I managed to make pills that made third arm, you really think I would live in this house? It would be much bigger. Now, Dietrich, can someone it would at least pick him bigger up and not floor? cleaner? I think I can hmm. move my arm at least a little. I know way help catching the fucking shit. Jesus. Um, Zephy is gonna go over and help her and chase. So before she does that, she's going to read the label. What does it say? Label. <laughs> <laughs> it's labeled. It's got three X marks on it and a circle through one of the X's. Well, if this kills you, Rain so it's Dietrich's fault, not mine. And she's going to give him three pills because there's three X's on the bottom. Three? <laughs> Shit, no, I'm taking one. <laughs> I'll take one. <laughs> But Rain Chase, so you have to follow the directions. There's three X's in this uh, bottle. Uh, I, I highly doubt that is dosage material. There's right. no way. No. Do it yourself. But thank you. I appreciate it. And he said he's just gonna like fucking put it in his mouth and like crunch on it. And grind it's it in the cinnamon powder. Altoid. And no, I'm kidding. It. Uh, <laughs> make uh. Act under pressure, roll Xavier to see if you can actually help his wounds. That's coolness. Am I on your cutout? No, Xavier's muted. Sorry. You're muted, Xavier. Um, I was just commenting on how Xavier isn't very cool because their coolness is plus zero. Uh, <laughs> roll to seven. Everything is fine. Rancheso is flying on painkillers and does not know you actually tightened those bandages incorrectly and have pinched a nerve and cut off circulation to his left leg. It's fine, though. Uh, she stands up and she's like, Yeah. Good, good job. That's about right. I mean, the bleeding has stopped. 
His Just left arm's turning a strange color, but the bleeding has stopped. It's a little purple, but he'll be all right. Those Xavier. are good tourniquets. Xavier, sure. I, uh, you're not that kind of doctor. I, I mean, it's just bandages. Anyone can figure out how to do that. See, look, I did it right. I, I uh, might like to try my hand at, at that, if you don't mind. I mean, uh, Act under sure, pressure. if you'd like to. Oh, minus two, because somebody already mucked this up a little bit. Minus two? Could, could I instead, as the other doctor? Both Bo asked first. It's also not that kind That's of why I'm asking Bo. <laughs> so funny. No, I'm going to give it a shot. Shane, don't listen to a doctor. You know, Dietrich, you, you just... Oh, no, I failed. <laughs> See what happens, you don't listen to doctor. Yeah, no, it's this is so a really good job. Oh, can can I can I uh do it the bow way? Sure can. Oh yeah. He'll he'll start to unwrap it and then pause for a second and try to rewrap it and then unwrap it and then rewrap it and ends up somehow creating a giant knot of bandage instead of it ending up on Rancheso, it is kind of wedged between a toe or something and no one's quite sure how it got there well um that's one way how to wrap a pre i mean i did not xavier i am too i am just i'm too no i did not seriously it's like you both don't know how to do this Really, Dietrich, why don't you give it a shot? You start walking over there, Dietrich? Yeah, Dietrich Mouse will walk slash. over. Oh. <laughs> the kitty is not on my shoulder still? Did not yeah, jump back up? Yeah, you in the side oh. of the face. Can oh, I, uh, oh can shit. I... Oh, okay. <laughs> can, I, yeah. can I, before we get into the, the, the kitty cat just a little bit, can I make an actor under pressure roll just to see what they're doing? You can't even move right now. High? Apparently, one of the things this pill does is simulate sleep paralysis. Rinchesa, your ear. Oh, damn it! Yeah, Rinchesa looks fine. I'm a doctor, uh, so I would know. I, I just glance at the bottle and see the bottle, and I say, oh, that might have been Ambia. Anyway, I wander might? off into another room to talk to the kitty. Pretty sure the cat just didn't want you making that worse. The cat would really like you to turn it back into a human, probably. Okay. Uh, shit, I need to clear space for this. Uh, well, Dietrich I... does that. The rest of you, I guess minus Rancheso, can fill void in on everything it. he missed in or out of character, your choice. You can either do it in character or just say, yeah, we tell him in the hour it takes Dietrich to set up. Oh, so void, my friend. We have been through a hell of an adventure, and we were unable to get a hold of you. I do hope you are all right. I'm doing fine. I gave Rancheska three pills. Looks like he only took one. I, I'm you just, know, it's probably for go, the best. I'm just gonna go ahead and take those no 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 don't touch those void don't do slap just wax them out of his hand with the fan we still have a problem i see old habits die hard <clears throat> eyeballs getting dried out because i can't blink void if you need a prescription you can always come to my office you know this you look right just fine. Thank you. Mm, you Wait. look just fine. You you don't want to take those. They they are clearly putting Ranchezo out of commission. They would do so for you as well. And uh, if I dare say, not combined very well with the alcohol that you have imbibed.
You take the other Did two pills. Did you just? Yeah. God damn it. You're an expert. Mm. You immediately recognize from the taste and texture. One of those was a Vicodin and one of those was an Ambien. Oh, this is going to be a cakewalk. <laughs> what? I'm not going back to the hospital for a second time today. I'm letting you know, Bo. You know... I don't blame you, especially when the priest, what, the one that mocked my face with Ska, was headed to the hospital to uh, do something unspeakable to Rancheso. To take his magic away from him. Oh no, it, you'll have to live in the world without magic? I know, I, it's awful, isn't it? It's not just taking away magic, my friends. It is killing. The priest is killing mages. I know. I know. <sighs> Fine. Then, Let's, you know, so we've identified who the culprit is that's been killing all of, all of us. So here's what we're going to do. Let's take a breath. You, got, you have a scar on your face now. Is that right? Yep. Yes. Okay, so some ice on it. I'm going to sit down in that chair over there for a few hours. Okay, until I feel not good again. And then Rancesco is going to need some uh, some rest. By the way, those bandages look like shit. Yes, I'm aware. Okay. Dietrich. They were done right you, the first time. What do you have to drink here? Check the toilet. Weird response, and I go to check the toilet, and I find the vodka. So you kept keeping the vodka. Do you open yeah. the tank? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, it depends on where you no, open. My, as a, I must. If someone tells me to check the toilet for alcohol, I'm looking in the tank, not the bowl. <laughs> so the bowl actually has the cheap vodka. He's always passing out, but the tank has a nice bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. Huh. I kind of take it out, and I was like, I was going to use this to clean that wound, but... <laughs> Do you then open the toilet You're lid? drinking <laughs> from the bowl, right? <laughs> I look like a fucking dog? <laughs> Do you really want the answer to that? You turn I guess it over. I lift the bowl. I guess I lift the bowl slightly. Just like mason jars of clear liquid. All right, great. Um, I pocket the the blue, and then I'll take a mason jar of what I assume is German moonshine? Vodka, iodine, gin, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I am not German, I am Russian. Why do you always mess that up? And as you turn to leave, you glance over at What? It. <laughs> what? <laughs> as you turn to leave, you glance over. Oh, no, 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 we can do that in character. What? I am Russian. I have been Russian this entire time. I do not know why you think I am German. I'm a lot higher than I thought I was. Holy shit. I'm fucking hearing Dietrich telling me he's <laughs> Russian. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that chair seems real nice. <laughs> Sit down. Fucking As you Russian. Turn to leave, yeah, right. you glance over at his open medicine cabinet. It's just wall to wall pill bottles. Well, that'll come in handy later. It will. I need you to roll uh, Act Under Pressure because uh, you salivate a little. Fourteen. Success with complication. Fourteen. You manage to look past your desire and you actually find painkillers. Maybe that would help Rancheso. Oh, and blood coagulant. Oh, and it's something to lower your blood pressure. Um... <laughs> I kind of, you know, I'm starting to just kind of chill and this day is ridiculous and we're not going to fight the priest right now. And I just go, by the way, guys, I can see your medicine cabinet over there. Doctors, maybe you should check that, see if that could help you out. Yeah, I'm going to charge you this bottle for that medical advice. So... <laughs> <laughs> And then I kind of like grab my jaw, and you can kind of hear like grinding inside in the back. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, bottle for sure. 
Glug. What? Oh. You're gonna kill yourself. Either that or your liver's gonna give out and then you'll die. By the time you finish that sentence, Void is in the chair and he's just smiling at you. He's looking at you, but he can't see you. Whatever he sees is making him smile. He's wasted. <laughs> Xavier's just gonna pick that bottle up that was in his hand and take a couple swigs herself. The alcohol Xavier. or the pill bottle? The uh, alcohol. <laughs> the mason jar or the fancy one? The fancy one. Okay. Uh, it's pretty smooth. <sighs> well, I'm surrounded by incompetence. I'm gonna take a seat on whatever clean portion of the couch I can find and shut my eyes for a little bit. Bo, well, you might want to do the same. Um, is there? She'll probably sit on the love seat then. Move some trash around. Maybe put a few blank newspapers down to protect her skirt. Uh, while they are sleeping or being in a state of consciousness that may be easily influenced, I would very much like to set up wards so that nothing enters their dreams and or subconscious thought. Roll soul. And then give us a cool creepy description of dream wards. <sighs> 18 success. So he has like a, a little bit of sand in, in a bag in his pocket, pocket sand. Unintentional. Um, but it's covered with all these silver sigils uh, that represent dreaming. And with it, he's going to mix some black salt and just kind of sprinkle it around them where they are. Dietrich's house is a mess anyway, it'll be fine. Uh, and then to seal that warding, he's going to prick his thumb and drip a, a drop of blood where the circle has been closed. Drip a drop of blood. Is that even? Yeah, that. Mm. You all share a similar experience. <clears throat> Those of you that have taken substances and/or are out, which is everyone but Dietrich at this point. When you complete your perfect uh, wards with an 18, you help them all touch that place deep within themselves where the spirit mixes with the soul. It's called the vortex. It's a place where the dreaming is the strongest. It's like a majestic whirlpool of yourself. And everyone else in that brief moment where all of human consciousness meets in dreams. It even helps you sometimes unlock some of the shackles the Demiurge left in place before it disappeared. You all see faint semblances of beasts licking at your hands in submission. A gigantic brass clockwork, a skinned hide you once bore, a rust-coated ring of keys, a machine's heart pulsating, a marble throne from which you once ruled, a weapon you once used to take your own life, the ashes from a scorched city, feathers from ragged angel wings, tiny and fragile in your hand. And then all of you at Beaumont slip into unconsciousness. Beaumont, your mind returns to the normal world and you are sad. I did not intend to put them all to sleep. That was that was not the intention. That is the safest way to protect their minds. Plus, Void and Ranchessel were already gone. It's only really Xavier you affected. Okay. Well, I mean, she looked like she she was going to take a nap anyway. Um. Uh, Ranchessel, Void, and Xavier, you all may recover one stability and one health. <laughs> Xavier was getting real unstable for a second. <laughs> that I have a question about. Question? So, What's the question? Uh, question. The question. The question. Um, 
is I never really asked how many damage levels I took during that whole debacle. You never really asked what? How many damage levels I took during that debacle. I didn't give you any. For now, you don't know because you're stoned and nothing hurts. The answer will depend on what happens during the rest of the events of while you're on that couch. Alrighty. Dietrich. Let's get a soul roll. Alright. Nine and fuck yeah. Twenty-three. Twenty-three, okay. Grab the cat. You, Dietrich, mind meld with the cat. Uh, you can feel the underworld tugging at you as you attempt to unravel the threads of the magic used to trap this person in the form of a cat. The Underworld answers your call and helps you unravel the threads by decaying them and rotting them and returning them to entropy, but it wants tribute. Tributes? What kind of tribute does it want? Same tribute it always wants. Something that makes you die a little on the inside. Something that makes you feel lost. Everyone describe one thing on your presence that will whoops, slip out of your pocket, whoops, fall from your hand, and just disappear into the depths of Dietrich's house, never to be seen again. Let's start with Beaumont. Something important. Uh, the cute guy's phone number from the bar. Xavier. Um, the badge she uses to get in and out of the office in which she works. Oh, that's glorious. Dietrich. It will be a literal part of my person. My pinky toe is now gone. Right, Chaso. Uh, so... Sorry, I'm thinking about how I'm back. <laughs> uh, I guess the, the keys to his club. And Void. They don't have... Sorry. Want to keep going? Oh, uh, I was just gonna say they don't have like he has a backup set at the club, but like this was the set that was handed to him when he first opened it, so it does have uh, an, emo an emotional attachment to it. A one-day sobriety chip. Harsh. When the spell completes, just as you all awaken, the cat is no longer mowing. Because the cat is an unconscious woman stretched out on Dietrich's dining room table. And that's where we pause for our mid-show break. So don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in about ten minutes. We'll see you then. Ice cream!
And we have returned from break. You all wake up feeling refreshed, not groggy. Okay, so important question. My arm was saved from because the circulation being cut off. How's my toe doing now? You don't know. Waking up refreshed doesn't mean you can sit up and check yourself out. That's fair. Goes to move and just, nope, nope. Sharp pains everywhere. I'm just gonna stay here. Yep. <clears throat> you will hear a lot of ah ha 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 ha. So, did I get to sleep at all, or was I awake the entire time doing the ritual? Awake the entire time doing the ritual. Seven okay. hours. You may describe how you did it and what it looks like. Uh, so after clearing some space, which resulted in uh, Dietrich kicking some things out of the way to create a small area, uh, he grabbed an assortment of items, uh, kitty litter, uh, pretty sure it was used, uh, circle of yarn, computer terminal from the 80s, seven oranges, a book of but appears to be gibberish. A lot of random meat and some nail clippings. And the entire time, he is just moving them around in slight motions until he finally gets it into what he believes to be the perfect pattern that actually fixes the world and unbreaks that binding that somebody did turning sin into a cat now you're really tired do I still see the human form of sin though the cat form is gone <clears throat> sin is unconscious I, I take because uh, this is as if it was a movie. Sin is unconscious. It's played out across your table, and the tablecloth got all wrapped up when she transformed back just enough to cover the important bits. Okay, I was going to say, if not, then I was going to take a carpet and put a carpet on top of her. The tablecloth is less prone oh. to make you to cause infection than your carpet. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Uh, so then... Uh, Dietrich is going to pop out uh, since apparently Renchezo is awake. Oh, good, you're up. Uh, uh, do this, yeah. do this, do this, do this, and do this for me. I am going to sleep. And I walk back and uh, lay on the meat. How and take am a nap. I supposed to get up, Renchezo? Room temperature seven hour old meat. Yep. Okay. It's the covered perfect in bed. Used cat litter. No, no, it's not covered in cat litter. The floor is covered in used cat litter. Okay. But yes, I take a nap. Although I'm very uneasy on my feet because, uh, as I say, a uh, stupid toe. I need to make a new one. You don't know what that means. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, anybody else up? Any, anyone else? Um, Xavier, Beaumont, Boyd, um. But you wake um, up refreshed but sad because you're sober. Yeah, I'm up. Francesco, what do you need? <laughs> uh, uh, Dietrich came in here like a madman shouting, do this, do this, do this. I clearly can't do a goddamn thing. Um, but I thought somebody else should know. Why can't you do anything? Uh, I don't know, because I'm bleeding everywhere. Maybe that... Uh, I don't fucking know. You don't think people Ten have ever more been minutes. I need oh more God, time I to sleep. To God. Yep, that's it, Francesco. You've been given the assignment. We need ten more minutes. And Wait. 
that save you. Okay, nope. Man. It's time to get up. Everyone get up. All right, let's go. <clears throat> no. Get up loudly. <laughs> up, up, up. Uh, he just annoying. uses a newspaper to cover her head. The, the Voight goes through his phone and finds the most annoying ringtone he has. Maximum volume. <laughs> uh, Voight, that is unnecessary. I am wide awake. All right, now that all of our peace has been disturbed, per usual by Voight, so let's see what that moment that you Dietrich hear Dietrich needs. snoring. Dietrich's still sleeping. We should all be asleep right now. Uh, he he actually stayed up all night, and uh, he said there was a someone naked on the table. I don't even know. Tyler, hi. Would Stin and Dietrich be protected by the wards that I had done during Void and Xavier sleeping, or would I need to redo them for them? Uh, you're not worried about Dietrich unless you want to be. Sin was protected. Oh, oh, it so would have only affected the people who were asleep when you did the, the protection. If uh, Dietrich noticed the salt, he probably would have moved it like, that's not supposed to be there. This also would be less about you not caring about Dietrich and more you assuming a mage is properly warded in their own home. You are in yours. If he's not, well, get good. Get good. <laughs> get good or get wrecked. That is how your world works. <laughs> As you mages. fuck around and find out. Uh, I did fuck around and I found out. Yeah. The rest of you, however, can do what you want. Um, how, mo how mobile am I? You can sort of sit up. You can sort of move around. You can sort of roll over. The end. Fair enough. Took enough drugs you could move, but then you risk losing more uh, body points, health points. Uh, uh, not to be uh, too uh, asky, uh, but I am no condition to move anywhere. Um, Davia is gonna pick up the maybe, pill bottle with the X's um, on it, and oh, go I'm not taking any more of those shit. No, <laughs> that left me in a waking nightmare. No, well, I'm had not. you taken the recommended dosage, maybe you'd be in a lot better state. I, I would be dead. Yes, um, Francesco, I'm a doctor, and Wait. those are unmarked pills. <laughs> Void, mon ami, did you find anything at all when you he were... He actually did yell last night for all of you to hear, there's a bunch of drugs in this medicine cabinet, you guys, with labels. Or something to that effect. And then he made some smart-ass comment about charging you one bottle of pills for that medical advice. Ah, uh, yes. Rancheso, I believe we have some more safe medication that you can partake oh absolutely if it's not the unmarked pills because holy shit no Voight was fine Voight uh, is mind, made out right. of drugs yeah she tosses the pills over her shoulder into the oh, abyss no, of Dietrich's home Xavier thank you I appreciate the effort I, 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 I do honestly but that shit no no a rat pops out of the wall grabs the bottle disappears that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna end well. Did you say it, Freddy? Did say a rat? <laughs> Damn it, Freddy! What do I feel like this is gonna end badly? I feel future? like it's a uh, sentient. This is rat. this is how you get this is how you get Dark Souls rats. So you get rats <laughs> that feast on your bones, okay? Bo will go retrieve some actual pills that Ranchezo can have. Bo, I'm going to need you to make an investigate roll, which is reason to see if you can actually deduce what is necessary using your phone and WebMD. <laughs> so, for every other 
for every other kids don't do this uh, at home di <laughs> for every other diagnosis it's oh you're going to die you're going to die but when you're actually going to die they're just like here take some medicine you'll be fine success with <laughs> success with complications okay uh uh he comes back out with three bottles meters out what looks like a perfectly reasonable dosage ranchazo and lists off why you should take each of the pills makes perfect sense okay i'll take them okay but it's not gonna kill him i right? don't, I, ha I have no no reason not to trust you feel a little better if you had like a chair uh you could regain some limited mobility or you know a walker a cane wouldn't cut it quite yet you're not quite greg house yet uh, you've yeah, got most of your faculties sexy. back, but it's really weird. You can't smell or taste anything, and everything is, like, tinted a shade of red. It's just fine. Uh, it's fine. Just blood bleeding in my nose. All right. I do COVID appreciate 2023? that. COVID-2023? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that was very helpful. Um, I mean, maybe I can get some... If I can get a, a walker... A uh, chair would probably do it. No, what's better? Can I get a tricycle? Okay, that'd be awesome. You're fully awake now, uh, Xavier, Voigt, and Beaumont. And you're like, wait, did someone say naked lady on the table in the dining room? Yeah, yes, I did. I There is apparently someone on the table in the dining room passed out. Uh, Don't know how they got there. But, yep, they're there. Xavier doesn't believe it, but she'll humor Rancheso and head over to the dining room table. Last thing you hear is, oh, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily trust Dietrich, but he's not a fucking liar. There is, in fact. But I know him. <laughs> a woman. Oh. Lithe, athletic, attractive only clothed by a tablecloth and strips. Sound asleep. Uh, everyone. There is, um, indeed a naked woman on the table. Dirty blonde hair. I nice eyelashes. Does Dietrich have any clothes that aren't uh, disgusting? And that is the question. Let me rephrase. Dirty blonde the color. It's not literally dirty. No, yeah, fair, fair. In Dietrich's believe... house, one, one must specify. <laughs> I believe that I am the most qualified for clothing, so I shall go check that out. Okay. Track pants, track pants, track shirt, sweatshirt, dress shirt, dress pants, track pants, track suit. One press dress, track pants, track shirt, sweatpants, boots, suit. Did you say a pressed dress? Still in the dry cleaning bag, even. Not quite a formal dress. Dietrich... Somewhere in between a formal dress and a casual dress. You know, Dietrich it's like does gown not length, have... but it's not silky. Hmm. Dietrich does not have good enough taste to have this in his closet on purpose he will cautiously sniff the dress to make sure it's clean it smells like uh arm and hammer cool i'll bring that for sin okay it is exactly her size that's weird yes that is a uh, madness uh, Do you allow Xavier to dress in? Yes. Uh, yes, Rancheso. Uh, I just want to know what's wrong with my uh, clothing apparel. It's for, like, I got this from a priest. See, it's holy. And then he pokes his finger out a hole. There are many things wrong with your clothing, my friend. So many things that we do not have time to go over all of it. Uh, Voight, I do believe wow. you had a question. They, used to call, they called me a trendsetter at the club. Are they lying to me? No, they wouldn't lie to me. Right? No, they wouldn't. 
Um, I was just going to ask um, before Sin is uh, dressed, um, I'm going to make my way into the kitchen, kind of walk in. Huh, really shit. Does the teacher have a blender? Um, and just <laughs> ignoring this woman sprawled out on the table. Um, Diedrich, do you have a blender? Snore. What? Dietrich's passed out hard, remember? No, I'm just, I'm asking the character. Like, uh, like, oh, you're asking Devin. Got it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, like, would you have a blender in this apartment? That's that's the bottle knives, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I will toss his kitchen until I find his bottle you knife. You won't find it there. No? Okay. Interesting. You find it in All a right. closet still in the box. It's like a $500 ninja never been opened. What the fuck yep. is going on with this guy? Yeah. Anyway, all right. I'll open that up. I'll make breakfast. I'll blender it and just alcohol. A couple of the not downers. So, some, some uppers for the, because it's the morning. And then any solid food I can find in the refrigerator that's not rotted. Throw so he's that got one in of those there. double door fridge with a pull open on the bottom. You open the double doors. <clears throat> it's just mason jars, a weirdly large amount of orange juice, but not real orange juice. Ooh, it's that like works. it's like Sunny D. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, it works. It's fine. Click the club. Couple little you'll bit think, of that. You'll thank me when you're older. Two month old eggs. Oh, perfect. Crack. A giant gallon sized baggie of pancakes. Like pre made or the mix? They were baked and then tossed in the fridge. They're baked. Oh, that's they were weird. made on the stovetop and tossed in the fridge. That's weird. I'll rip them up and throw them in. And like a lot of empty cheese wrappers. So you pull open the freezer and it is neatly, orderly, and alphabetically labeled and stacked meat. Like butcher meat in wax paper. Just full to the brim. I'm gonna look at that and just be like, mmm. A lot of bacon nah, there. Listen, mmm, I don't feel like cooking and I'll just close. And one That's enough. I got eggs. On the top. I got eggs. We're fine. We got all the food groups alcohol, pills, eggs, pancakes. We got pizza. I will blend that up. Throw it all in there. <laughs> I'm gonna throw all of that into the blender. Yes. Pancakes seem um, fresh. Oh, the, the eggs orange, just with, fall with out as juice. one congealed bit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you do a little bit of alcohol, right? Some Sunny D, right? <laughs> oh, the clear alcohol. The 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 the, yeah. the, the Russian Toilet alcohol. Shine. Okay. You do the clear alcohol, right? Then you do a little bit of Sunny D. That's just a poor, that's just a poor man's mimosa, right? Okay. And then you <laughs> you rip up the pancakes into the smallest bits you can throw those in there crack the eggs in and then uh, I will take some sort of thing and crush up some other additives and blend it all up and then pour one two three wait one two three four four glasses man I made breakfast this is the world's worst bloody man None of you watch this because you didn't say you were. You're all in the other room. When he comes back, whatever he's carrying that looks like a smoothie, smells really good. It smells like sugar and blueberries. Mm. I'll have one of them. I made breakfast. Wait. It's got that uh, nice texture at the bottom. It's foamy on the top. Watch me drink it first. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look like he savors the taste or he just throws it back to not tasting it? Probably it's... throwing it back as much as he can. Also, Lupine Vendetta, the answer to your question is, except for the bacon, it's just labeled by cut, not by what kind of meat it is. Xavier. Yes. Um, a little bit blend. 
she's going to like stick her pinky finger in it and then just press it on the top of her tongue. Tastes like blueberry pancakes. When I see Fuck. Xavier takes one of the pre-made drinks, I go, that was Sin's. <laughs> Sin, would you... And she gestures to the drink. It seems like Sin is a little uh, indisposed at the moment. So. <laughs> Conscious lady, yeah. Um, she drinks it, and she actually takes her time drinking it. Um, the texture is <laughs> correct. The flavor is passable. The foam is right. You immediately feel like really cool, man. Everything's groovy. I I think I need to sit down. <laughs> um, and just when and... you're starting to relax, then that's when it hits like crack. Oh, God. That's when it hits. Like, uh, like, uh, like, like crack, uh, like I need to go fast, or crack, like I don't feel okay. Like he put uppers in that thing. Oh, uh, wait, right, I, I didn't you know you were such a... You've got to go. You've got a lot to do today. You know, all of a sudden, I feel like I can get so much research done today. I don't know what happened, what's coming over me. Dietrich? Dietrich, are you awake? Um, I, I think we need to clean your apartment a little bit. It's a little messy. Um, maybe I should start in the kitchen. You start Boy, in the kitchen. What, uh, are you sure you're not a mage? I don't think so. Nope. Just a Wait. chemist. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no Hadouken comes out of your hand. That, <laughs> Doing the that Jedi is not... Thing. You always you not gotta check. You gotta, you gotta check. A funny quote comes to <sighs> mind, boy. To the unlightened, science just seems like magic. <laughs> Drugs are science. No, not a mage, but maybe I'm as much of a doctor as Xavier is. Oh, then you must be an excellent doctor. Mm. And she kind of just rolls her eyes and gets <laughs> back to cleaning. <laughs> It doesn't bother I you, mean, though, because it wasn't just uppers. It was uh, good feels pills, too. You're in a really good mood. <sighs> oh, it's going to be such a lovely day outside. I just, I can't wait. It, despite the priest of death and suffering trying to kill us, and despite <laughs> me making a strange deal with these otherworldly beings, I'm sure everything's going to be okay. Um, I lost my badge somewhere in here. Oh, doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep cleaning the kitchen. There are protein Bo, shakes would you left. like anything? <laughs> I am uh, not touching that with yeah. a ten foot pole. That being said, um getting a Dietrich, getting this unconscious person. Uh Jesus, where do uh, like where do we even go? We gotta talk to her. Uh, she's passed out. Uh, you hear a thump. We need and then footsteps. Oh Jesus, and I uh, and then Sin walks in from the other room, says, Nice dress, thanks. Where's that asshole, Dietrich? Grabs one of the glasses absentmindedly, chugs it down, <laughs> flings it into the corner, says, There he is, and storms off into the other room. Okay. There's one uh, less glass of shape smoothie now. I, I guess I'll drink one, um, and then I'll, I'll do my best to coherently say, uh, I mean, I think I might need a little bit more medical attention. And my bar has a VIP room that's secured if we wanted to go there. And I have some amount of connections there that I should be able to talk to about getting myself in a little bit better place. Can you even move to get there? Uh, I mean, chair, walker, whatever, whatever I need to do. I can move around a little bit without my stitches opening up. But I ain't running no marathon. What are you no, doing? Just, uh, oh. just, uh, Beaumont. I believe Bo would be making plans to find the May safe and 
less grody place to stay. I mean, you did hear Franchiso say you could go to his club. But is it safe? I know it's a VIP room, but is it safe? Uh, yeah, I... That you don't bring know. protection around my home. Much like any mage does. Well, as that seems to be the only option at the moment. Very well, we will, uh... Proceed. However, we need to find a, a bigger vehicle. I don't quite trust the horrible transit. Oh, why not? Horrible well, transit. What will happen? Oh, yes, you were unconscious. Ah, uh, so. <laughs> I, I was laying in a hospital bed, yep. Oh, no, wait. You were there. You remember the angel thing. Oh, yes. You, I yes, me, I yes, you're right. Yes. yes, a little bit of out of body experience. Oh, all coming back to me now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, well, um, shall we see if Dietrich's dead or not? I mean, you, you can go see if he's dead. I'm going to sit my ass right here. And he just kind of like does that awkward like one arm push up just so that he's kind of sitting up on the couch and then he goes to lean forward and he, goes, and he starts feeling a pull on the side and he goes nope 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 <clears throat> and just sits back down and goes no 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 you can uh nope I'm, I'm staying here you can uh go see to a guest yes I, I do not the not murdering of Dietrich well oh. That second option does not bother me quite so much. But I will, in fact, go see what they are up to. So you're heading to the club? Uh, no, um, Beaumont's going to go check out uh, what Dietrich and Sin are, are doing, talking oh. about. You round the corner and hear an epic slap and a disturbed snore. <laughs> and then muttered cursing. In German? Nope. In 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 Midwestern. Uh pardon me, but uh sin my share, I, I do not think that you're going to be able to wake Dietrich at this point in time. He expended quite a bit of energy to bring you back from your feline form. Yeah, it only took him a whole day and a half. Uh, um, yes, I, I do not deny that he is not quite the sharpest spoon in the bulb drawer, but... Uh, Would you care to come explain your situation to those of us who are conscious? It's pretty simple. I need a ride. I need to get out of cat form. I need a ride to the meeting with Garnet. I haven't seen her in a long time. A meeting? Garnet. That name sounds familiar. It should if you're paying attention and don't want your soul ripped out by the priest. That's right. Uh, yes, we can provide a ride for you. Uh, would you care to travel with us? That's how rides work, right? Well, yes, however. Hitchhiker. Huh. Alright. Yes. Yes, uh, we just need to locate a big enough vehicle. We really ought not to get separated. That's what rentals are for. Digs around in her back pocket, pulls out a card, flings it to you. Mm, thank, thank you very much. I will arrange the car. Have we met before? Mm. 
met before? Not in this lifetime. Anyway. Not the first dream mage I've met, though. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Hmm. I, I will. So well for the other one. No, I don't suppose that they do end well for most mages. Thank you. And uh, Beaumont will go off and arrange a rental. Okay, what's everybody else doing? Will you wait on Dietrich? Uh, <clears throat> after I've shotgunned my drink, um, I'd overheard someone said it, and I know we've kind of gone over it, but role playing to the whole kind of not always there thing. So, did one of you guys say that you guys had to make some sort of deal with another entity to get past this priest? Oh, yes, that that was me. Uh, I was half on it. I believe my responsibility is mostly mine, if we're going to be honest. Ooh. So, in two days, we have to go and destroy the power plant. Sounds easy. <clears throat> okay, I know. <clears throat> nope. One more time. Uh, that was wait. a character. <laughs> Boy, oh. I know you might not be the brightest of them all, but I know you're not deaf. <clears throat> I hate repeating myself. Anyways, so we have to do this in two days or... One day now. Well, uh, my time has definitely gotten away from me. One day. Or... I actually don't know what they'll do to us if we don't do this. Probably I am of the opinion that we don't find out. Probably make the priest cross our path again on t intentionally. And that's when from the corner, Beaumont says, oh, for Pete's sake. Beaumont, you're making the call and you got the car rented, rented and it's a nice one and you got all the options and you look at the card and it says, Dr. Dietrich and Scarborough. Nah. She, she just <laughs> took shit out of his wallet and gave it to you. She's honestly <laughs> lucky it was in the wallet this time. Thought, so Ambrose thought that she was handing him a car rental card. Nope. Not credit a card, credit card. She took out of Dietrich's wallet. Amazing. He'll look at it and then he'll just kind of shrug and read off the information. Okay. <laughs> Carry on with the discussion of favors owed. Well, well that's... Um, yeah, so we have to figure that out. And what's the timetable in our, our first meeting that we have to do? Two but days. Tonight? Two days? So we have to kill the power plant tomorrow, and then the day after we have to show up for this meeting. Shit. Honestly, I say we do it tonight, if that's what the case is, because um, I'm, for the first time in my entire life, I think she's right, my name is Avia. I don't really feel like pressing our luck on this and doing something the day of that leads to trouble. I mean, that's so fair. What, what do I we got to do? Like, go pull a fuse or something? Well, uh, when someone says destroy, typically I think they mean completely and utterly obliterate it. Ashes to the ground. I, I think we can be a little bit liberal with, hopefully, the, uh, destroy. Damage or utterly destroy? Must it be done on time or early? Uh, instructions unclear. Uh, Xavier's probably starting to slow down a little bit from the special breakfast movie. Um, yes, but this yeah. house is clean. <laughs> Dietrich's going to be real mad. It even smells good. Did, uh, <laughs> Xavier, did Xavier find any of the lost possessions? Nope. Those are gone forever. Mm. 
she's gonna go back on the couch with the one with the same newspaper and go back to sleep. Wait, did, did you were also you your cleaning? I was say, did say you that also again? clean? Did you also clean the room that I was in? You know, I. How long has it been? I think if it's been a little bit more than a couple hours, she probably would have. Yes. Did you pick me up off the meat pile? Ew. <laughs> she yeah. probably cleaned around you as best she could. Because even with the drugs in her system, I don't think she would touch a pile of meat. Might have rearranged it so it wasn't like meat juicy everywhere. Fair. Uh, you learn several interesting facts, uh, Xavier. Okay. Like that Dietrich doesn't actually own this house. It's a rental. Mm, not getting that security deposit back. Oh. Just minor details like that uh, nothing that affects the game interesting i would uh if if i could it's hard to tell how much of dietrich is real and how much is dietrich posing oh there's a kitty kitty uh i mean i would like to make a stop at my club at least for a little bit these bandages are not gonna hold all that well He's trying to find some other substitute unless what was her name in the other room? My name is does Sin. She know, does she know any oh Sin, Sin, yes. You don't need to, to talk to me in the third person, it's weird. Uh sorry. Do you know anything about healing? I mean, yeah. Healing power clugging sound of alcohol. What do you need? <laughs> Look at my body and I'm like, because I haven't changed out of my out of my smock and the blood is just everywhere. Uh, I need not to, not to bleed everywhere. Oh yeah, I got you. Not to open up the wounds, not to be back to functioning. She rustles around for five minutes or so and then comes out into the living room with an armload of stuff from... Uh... The bathroom, including pills, gauze, towels, bottles. And uh, walks right up to Rancheso, and no matter what he says or what you ramble at her, she just ignores it, rolls you over, just, like, pours iodine across you. <laughs> and then oh, just starts geez. scrubbing it in with, like, a shower scrubby. Oh, no. And then gets to work, cleaning your wounds. <laughs> and it hurts like mad hell. You may recover one body, and you may lose one stability. She finds done. one particularly nasty cut and mutters, iodine won't do it. Where's the acetone? That hurts like mad hell. <laughs> Believe in shit. But she All does right, her bandages so properly. Oh, thank God. Where's... Alright. Where's my body at? We're looking at... And she throws away some of the old bandages, <coughs> keeps a couple... Wanders back into the bathroom. Uh, that that hurt r real bad, but thank you. That was actually You're welcome. Done. Shit, that fucking hurt. God damn it. Uh, so how wounded am I now? <clears throat> you now have two lost health levels. All right, so I have two serious wounds. And you're like. Thinking to yourself, I'm glad that's over. When she marches back out <laughs> with a medical staple gun that apparently Dietrich had somewhere. And before you have time to protest, goes to work. Where the fuck? <laughs> just the where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> you don't heal any more health levels, but you're mobile now. Staples are much less prone to pop than stitches are to tear. All right, all right. Back on my feet now. So she doesn't stop till she runs out of staples. 
You're not entirely certain she was only stapling wounds. Uh, okay, so I, I don't want you to take this personally, but you enjoy that, don't you? Enjoy what? Stapling? It's very relaxing, yes. I, I thought so, thank you. Okay, we're done with that now. <laughs> You have been a godson. Uh, and... You move slow. Any movement for physical rolls is penalized. Your speed is halved. But you're mobile. Alright, well... Uh, it's pretty patched up. I don't know how good I'm going to be, but... We don't get a lot of time, right? She tucks away the samples of you she collected and carries on with her day. Well, obviously, everything comes with a price. And I clocked that. Like, I, you know, it was like, yeah, of course. Has it been long enough for me to wake up? Not quite, because I need to know if there's anything else anyone wants to do in the next six hours. Your conversations took maybe 30 minutes of that six hours. You don't have to. Just giving you the option. You can't just sort of wait around in the now clean house, watch TV, read a book. Um, well, if we have six hours, I'm going to make a trip to the bar, see if there's anybody that can help me, you know, patch me up more. Uh, I'm, I will make a half-hearted attempt to convince Francesco not to do that. No, wait, don't go. I'm in agreement with Fort. Francesco, I do not think that we should be separated. Yeah, it's dangerous and shit, man. Just stay here. Or not. Okay. I'm not gonna be too much help, but alright. Ooh, stay? how about the... How about this? Hold on. Here. I got you. I got, I got you. And I'll grab the remote, and I'll just find the cooking network. Here. Restaurant. Food. A kitchen. Cooking. I bet there'll be an Italian person on cooking noodles for, like, you know, the 900,000th time on this network. Oh, Guess what they do? They is. make noodles and then a sauce and put it together. It's great. Yeah, that's uh, incredibly stereotypical. All right, thanks. You all get really hungry. Beaumont, you gonna order <laughs> anything with that card? Yeah, gonna order everyone. I don't know what day is it. Tuesday. Tacos. Excellent. <laughs> Choice. Unless it is Saturday, in which case I would order sushi. Yeah, it's taco day. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do sushi after I do some kind of terrible seaside thing for you. What about falafel? And that's what you wake up to, Dietrich, six hours later. The smell of a taco spread in your dining room. Fish tacos. Chicken tacos. Street tacos. Beef tacos. What is that atrocious smell? Your house smells Cilantro really good. Cilantro and so hot sauce, motherfucker. But are you saying that Xavier cleaned Dietrich too? Mm -hmm. Just spread some Lysol on him and wet his <laughs> face a little bit. And, you, and just a liberal pouring of uh, furniture polish. You smell very lemony. Yeah. <laughs> I walk into the sticky. room to see everyone else. Seems and, like, uh, oh, hey, asshole. Oh, good. You, you've got more clothes. Where the hell did you find the dress? I have your what? He gave it to me. Where the hell did you find the dress? It was in your closet. There are clothes there? Uh. Yes, that is where... Clothing belongs. Huh. Francesco, why are you orange? <laughs> it's from the iodine. <laughs> <laughs>
Because I have been thoroughly disinfected, Dietrich. Something I have needed since I've Wait, you stuff. use iodine on your skin? That shit burns! Yeah. It's in Snickers. Burned. Yep. Oh, you are a sadist! And a masochist. Hand you a blueberry smoothie. I chug it. <laughs> you feeling real good. Oh man, this is like the time I took six types of LSD. Everything has colors and words to go with it. It's really weird. Okay, where's my? I look at the table. What are you looking for? Food. There's tacos. Oh yes, there's a spread big enough to feed all of you twice. And a really I nice just... rental car out front, like the hundred dollar, hundred and fifty dollar a day kind. Eh. It's the most loaded SUV you've ever seen in your life, and it's a big one. It's like an Xterra. It's can seat eight. Neat. I did not know any of you could afford this. I mean, Xavier is doctor, but I mean, she's kind of a. Uh... Well, you know, I, I came into some money. Oh, good for you. I mean, your parents sold you to me, but good for you. I don't know who gave you money. That's for me to know and you to find out. I don't care, though. In approximately 32 days from now. <laughs> that is oddly specific. Anyway, I reach into the center and grab tacos that are touching other tacos and just start wandering around with tacos in hands, letting it fall all over the place as I walk. Bo, I, I feel like dessert. We should probably order from somewhere expensive. God damn it. <laughs> oh, if you're I mean, going to if you're going to pay, there is this place that is uh <laughs> about uh two miles down the road. Uh oh man, they charge so much extra. I mean honestly I feel like when you buy from there you are trying to buy their entire house, but it's okay because it is very good. It actually tastes terrible, but it's still super expensive. Bo, just put it on the card. There's also uh, a Coldstone Creamery in this neighborhood. Hey, Coldstone's I, good. I think that uh, the best idea might be some beignets from around the corner. No, no, no. Hold on. Let me call them right now. Dietrich insists we cannot deny him this. <laughs> No, Bo has money. Why would we not spend it? Mm, exactly. Well, it's not so much that it is expensive oh, oh. that we are. Maybe, maybe we should focus more on the ordering versus the explaining. Yes, uh, that is also why I suggested the beignets because they will taste much better than that place that Dietrich is trying to. Why do you think I really don't? Why not fancy Bo? Bakery around the corner, like a really fancy, like cupcake cost ten dollars bakery. Why not, Bo? It's a place Everyone's happy. Day. You know, Xavier, that is that is a brilliant note. I, I, I think that we shall, in fact, why, why not both? I mean, life is so short, and we're about to be murdered by the priest, so... I was going to say, I mean, even if you charge it, it's not like you're going to live to see the bill. Yeah, precisely. You heard it from the man himself. I will, but you all will die. Perfect. 30 minutes later, you have a spread of really good and really shitty desserts. Hot sauce and tacos. Seriously, why you get beignet when you can go to the restaurant? I tell you to. Uh, uh, we got both, Dietrich. There's yours. It's chocolate covered okay. bugs. Mm. Enjoy, Dietrich. I'm going to eat a beignet. I have tacos. No. Sin says, should have got a king cake while you were at it. I could stand to eat some baby Jesus. You're not supposed to eat that part, Sin. Aren't you, though? <laughs> well, uh, considering it's a little plastic piece... Hold on, I, I can do next best thing. And I pick up one of the smaller packages of the chocolate 
covered in insects, and it says, Carpenter Ants. Mm, my favorite. Holds them in her hand, whispers to them. They shake off the chocolate and take off. Wow, they were dead before. That's awesome. You need to teach me that trick. I could make money at parties. You can't learn that trick. What trick? Life magic. Yeah, who cares about that? Go back to eating tacos. Who the hell made my house dirty? D dirty Dietrich? This is as clean as I've ever seen it. How the hell am I supposed to find anything? It's all been picked up and put in a spot, Dietrich. There's spots for things. Yes, there were spots up. for things too. The puking corner in the hallway? It's still a puking corner. It's just clean now. Then how am I supposed to know how much puke there is? You're not. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> you clean, you clean like I it said, up. How am no I supposed to find things it. now? Oh, jeez. I might as well burn this place. I'm surprisingly okay with that. It's not with me in it. I'll take my walker and walk my ass outside. I need the drink. And I will walk to get the toilet or toilet booze. The good toilet booze. It's just a bunch of empty mason jars and an empty bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. Is the bottle actually there, or did Voight not even put it back? Um, if I remember correctly, Xavier took the Johnny Walker bottle last. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's probably in between the couch cushions where she was laying earlier that day. Oh, no, I need to refill it. And I pour from the tap brown water and put it back into the toilet. Perfect. I didn't spend several hours clean. You know what? My mother taught me not every battle is one worth fighting, and this is one of them. Do as you please. You now have uh, I mean, 18 hours to blow up a power station. I mean, for what it's worth, Zuby, you did a great job. Thank you. I'm glad someone recognizes all the work that I've done. Of course, it was you. But how Xavier, are we blowing this power station up? I think I Dietrich's three so we, You know, let, let, let's define blow up. Destroy. Can we be a bit creative here and not knock out power for everyone? Or do we have to just blow a damn thing up? Uh, what kind of power station is it? Did anyone Google it? Nope, not yet. You would be what? the first. Yeah. yeah, it's more fun just to find out that you can get there. Uh, no, I, I do think that we should research this. Uh, but also, don't forget, there's a very also time-sensitive meeting with Garnet. Everything is time-sensitive right? Time right now, so that's why I made us those wonderful breakfast smoothies and everyone's energy levels are up. So let's, now that we're all awake, how about we go ahead and just get started on this, because I'm not interested in us being late on this. And you can see he's like tapping, you know, whatever he's close to and kind of like, you know, ready to go. So we have to blow up the station. And then we have to meet, get to our meeting. What What's time the timetable? What does the timetables look on that meeting? Because we've got 18 hours on the station. Uh, yeah. 32, it... 32 hours to get to the meeting. Uh,. What time is it now? Early evening. Early enough Late to afternoon, meet. whatever you want to call it. Well, evening would be the important part because has the sun set yet or not? No. Okay. Damn. So yeah, we can uh, power plant first, blow it up, go to meeting. Is that our plan? Cut dry, simple. 
Yes, that uh, sounds fantastic as fantastic can be in this scenario. Uh, I agree. Now, uh, as far as conversation goes as to how to move this plant up, is there any clever ideas? Well, when it gets dark out, I can just have a bunch of people, you know, try and blow it up for us. I mean, they are hapless, helpless peoples, but they will try and help. Um, uh, please explain. Well, you know, I, I talk to people at night, they listen, they do things for me. He's a symbiotic relationship. He's a madness man. He drives the mad. Like I, I said, I talk to them, they do things for me, symbiosis. Can I, uh... I want to Google this plant. And, uh, what type of plant is it? Power substation. We run on gas, we run on charcoal, we run on water. Substation runs on power from the power plant. Okay, so this is an actual main hub for a substation of like. Power comes in from the power plant, to... goes through repeaters, gets amplified, and sent back out. Goes through it's a trying... relay. Relays. Are we trying? To... Are we trying to blow up a substation for the for like one quarter of the United States? This will or is blow power to New Substation. Okay, this is just a citywide thing. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Just like all substations, it has an emergency diesel backup, but that's not what it runs on. That's for when the power goes out from the source. Mm. Xavier, what was the what was the wording again of this? Like destroy, annihilate completely? Uh, all they said was to destroy. There wasn't much more instructions included. Going back through her phone, does Xavier see any of the strange text messages yes. that was sent? It's very clever. And it does say we want you and your friends to utterly destroy. Okay. So that doesn't leave much room for ambiguity. So you can't just pull a fuse and you can't just get other people to do it. Good. Utterly destroy. That doesn't seem like you'd be fulfilling the letter of the oath. And even you non-mages can guess that's probably unwise. Okay, if it would be unwise. The instructions were to destroy the power plant by the end of the day. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right. So no interpretation. They're utterly destroyed. So. Well, mages. Well, that includes backup get to it. as well. Okay, that's cool. You said we've got, the, and are we, we would be aware that a station like that would have a diesel uh, yep. generator system. Yeah. Got an idea. Theoretically, an underground tank like a gas station. Are, are you thinking blow up the back up to blow up the front? Oh, I'm thinking that if we have to utterly destroy something, that includes the backup. No, I think Void is talking about destroying the backup to destroy the front up. Basically, they've got a large supply of accelerant there for us, so... Well, diesel underground? I don't know about you guys, but... <clears throat> kind of like, you know, kind of take back my um, hoodie sleeve. You can see that my skin is like kind of bulging and has like breaks in it where bone is sticking out I'm pretty good with fire like in general hmm. okay so I will light your arm on fire you will run into the diesel engine and it will go boom and then you hmm. will leave no no that won't work but I can make the fire what is the name it won't hurt me Okay. I call driver's seat.
I to be fair, Beaumont, not. the rental is in his name. I will not object to you driving. You seem to have gotten us there in other situations relatively safely. <laughs> and driving someone else's rental, you think I'm going to be safe? <laughs> I would like to arrive alive. Thank you very much. We have plenty to do. I have. You always idea. complain about me. Always, always, always. Just because of one little thing. Most of these power stations have a leave is the word transistor in me. That is nothing but a... Now, I remember this <clears throat> from working in my youth with my electrician uh, uncle. Most of, most of these substations have these transistors, and if you toss metal into them, they literally blow up. Uh, so that is actually... What they are is uh, just big packs of coils. I believe that's how they operate. I'm not quite sure of the specifics, but I'm going to be honest. Uh, but they do have these, and if you talk, they are because of the heating element that has to be done for them, they are mostly open. And if metal finds its way inside, it tends to heat up and short out in the most violent of manners. But it's also kept, kept on a relatively heavy lock and key because of that. If I remember correctly. Is there any way that we could perhaps explode this place with a, a, a bit of magic instead of having to take the time and go elsewhere that is under lock and key? and retrieve things that could possibly get us arrested before we try and do something that could get us arrested. I mean, I'm a death mage, so I could probably summon some spirits to try and help us out that way. You don't have any exploding powers for any of you mages, but you're mages. You know how to contact entities that can help, entities that could provide literally anything you needed to do this like the armory and the matrix before they storm the building to get Morpheus back before we get caught up in any sort of other planning we they've got yeah, yeah, there will be a cause Sorry. we don't need to get anyone else involved in this we have a plan there right mm -hmm. okay okay like the diesel with the Plan diesel well. destruction like there right we can do that we have a bomb given to us already where are you keeping a bomb underneath the power plant Why would they have a bomb under the power plant? You can I'm kind that. of hear bones cracking and like running together. It's just getting frustrated at these at, at okay, the situation. Okay. Why do we not forget about the bomb and just blow up the diesel generator? That would Same chuckles. So we have this diesel. This Sin says, diesel. I wonder how much of that meat in that freezer is Dietrich's brain. You know, I have wondered that on many occasions. Speaking uh, of, I, I feel well, like getting some before? food. Huh. Interesting. Well, 
know that one right. Uh, you know, Dietrich and I are scientists, and we probably have access to hundreds and hundreds of chemicals. Some of them react very violently with the atmosphere itself. Potassium in water, for example. If we could fit the time in, perhaps we could just make a trip to one of our labs, pick up a drum of one of these highly unstable compounds, place it in a few select areas, and go from there. Well, uh, what I think we need, correct me if I'm wrong, is an explosive big enough to pop the top on this diesel cavity and aerosolize the diesel inside, creating a small explosion. I thought we needed a match. That was my that assumption will, as well. A match? A match will not light diesel on fire underground. It will not cause an explosion. I could take a road flare and dunk it in diesel and it not light on fire. What if I think you I think you are crazy. What if dear honest? death me what if dear death mage perhaps you use death in a different sense? What if you were to rot the diesel in some form that would corrupt the machine of the power plant? Talking more or less entropy. Entropy. It's just processed dinosaur blood. Uh, I mean, what, okay. What would that do? Like diesel goes bad all the time. Perhaps we could just pour sugar in the tank. Uh, why do you not want to make it more combustible? I mean, if these are gigantic turbines. Well, I'm just picturing a power relay, so they wouldn't be generating any power at all. It'd mostly be like just relays and switchboards. Something along the lines of the fact that Diesel is dead dinosaur, and the fact that you are a death mage and you can work in entropy. Some form of animation, busting pipes. I could rot, well, it's possible I could rot away the foundation surrounding this diesel cavity on top, making it easier to access. I'm not under. I guess I'm not understanding what turning diesel, entropy and diesel would do. So, consider it more, and and I may have misspoken. Consider it more reanimation of dead tissue. Could you not control the movement of said diesel? Could you not? cause it to build up in one place and burst from pipes burst from tanks I have never tried again mating power substation does two things it amplifies the power coming from the source and it cools the machinery that amplifies the power coming from the source you have to fall back on the backup generator. The backup generators are what keeps the machinery cool. If the machinery doesn't remain cool and overheats, say if the diesel only powers one part of the system and not the other, the way that Beaumont is implying, everything overheats, everything breaks down. And when the power plant overheats, it's very, very bad. It doesn't like have to be man. nuclear to result in fires and short outs and explosions. <clears throat> so what you're saying is we cause a blockage to these backup generators so that they overheat the system. After you make it so they have to use the backup generator, that's the other piece of the puzzle. You have to make it fail so it's forced to use the corrupted diesel generators.
So, uh, Bowman, can you make people sleepwalk? Yes. I can make them do a number of things. Cool, we get somebody to sleepwalk themselves in and screw up machine to make sure it starts back up. You know, somebody who actually knows what the hell they're doing in there. Because, uh, the buttons are probably very pretty. Yes, it it can be done. See, I am I am brains behind operation. <laughs> Says the person who only offered one tidbit of the puzzle. I have linchpin. And that it's a perfect place to pause for this week. Next week go to war against a power substation <laughs> and you should definitely bring the non-mages even though they can't do magic because I'm sure there'll be security and other issues one will have to deal with yeah. what could possibly mm. go wrong I don't even know I'm going to go look at power substation schematics no reason <laughs> As the horde visions of reality fade and the comforting safe lie descends upon us once again, we wish you all a good evening and hope you return to experience the next chapter in this tale next week. But until then, there are many other fine performances the Razides of Horple Tale force the rest of us to provide you with 11 times a week. On Mondays, experience the Curse of Strahd at 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by Solemn Veil vale at 11. On Tuesdays, uh, Dark Sun at 7 p.m. On Wednesday this week, a 5e one-shot at 8 p.m. Uh, Thursday this week is on hiatus, but soon they will be returning with Starfinder at 9 p.m. On Fridays, Masks of Gnarly Thotep at 7, followed by, of course, this show again at 11. On Saturdays, Pathfinder 2E Reign of Winter at 7, followed by the Red Opera at 11. And finally, on Sundays at 9, Mage the Ascension, Vastation Regenerated. If you love our live plays, be sure to stay tuned this spring as we begin rolling out our Patreon exclusive shows too. They'll start hitting the airwaves later this month, one after the other. <coughs> I myself can be found next to running Rain of Winter tomorrow at 7. Come check it out. A frozen tale of terror. Victims of the lie, tell the audience who you are and where you can be found in our show and other shows and other cool things you do outside of our show. Hello, uh, my name is Steve. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him, and tonight I played Voight, the Abomination, who's starting to get a little frustrated um, for no reason, ultimately. It's because he's a, uh, he has some addiction issues. Um, and things happen when he gets frustrated. Anyway, uh, you'll find me next on Sunday um, playing the no longer Punch Mage, now a Sword Mage, Drake Jones. Um, Doing sword mage stuff. And I don't do anything outside of vocal tales. So you cannot find me. Hey everybody, I've enjoyed playing Beaumont Augustine for you. And you can find me all over the internet as I am changeling. You can find me playing again on Sunday evening as alternate universe gabriel who is way different from old universe gabriel the sad but not too sad because his avatar is old universe gabriel so it should be interesting cult of ecstasy knights of templar hello all i have been dietrich and i am devon you can find me online that's sort of solid and next time you'll see me will be on Monday for Strahd Revamped, where I play a time lock. Friends, hello. My name is Keems, and you can find me on the interweb at It's Me Keems. Tonight, I've played Xavier Watson, the scientist. And you can catch me again next week, doing the same thing at the same time. And hi, it's me, John. Uh, apologies. My son decided to wake up, so I am out doing it here doing this. And you'll catch me a little bit earlier on during the day next week. Uh, so I think 7 o'clock for Cthulhu next week. Excellent. And we leave you to your nightmares as you dream of the truth beyond the lie. And we will see you all again next week. Until then, good night.